bananas. I am currently traveling up the east coast of Australia and I just hopped off my Greyhound bus from Noosa and I've just arrived in Rainbow Beach. Now Rainbow Beach itself isn't exactly the most touristy of destinations but it is the main gateway to Fraser Island which is one of the most spectacular attractions in all of Australia. And I'm so 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 excited to say that I'm going to be spending the next three days and two nights on the island of Fraser Island. I'm going to be doing Pippi's Beach House 4WD Tag Along Camping Tour, which is quite the mouthful, but this is like one of the iconic backpacker experiences to do in Australia. So I'm super excited. I've never done this before. I have been to Fraser Island, but just on a day trip and it was 11 years ago. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. There are a bunch of different companies that you can go with. I'm going with Pippi's because they are the most well-known. I'd say they are arguably the most famous for their backpacker Fraser Island tour. And I booked this with Welcome to Travel, like everything that I'm doing on the East Coast. This series is actually sponsored by Welcome to Travel. They are a tour company who have tours in Melbourne and Sydney, which are absolutely perfect if you're arriving in Australia on a working holiday visa or just here as a tourist. You can actually get $50 off their tours if you use my code BB50. And what they also were able to do is help you and support you with everything that you might possibly need in Australia, whether it be help finding a job, help getting a SIM card, a tax file number, a bank account, or or just help planning your East Coast adventure, which is so useful right now because things are booked out like three or four weeks in advance. Like you can't, in the, in the peak season on the East Coast of Australia, unfortunately you can't be spontaneous. So it just helps so much to have everything booked, especially a tour like Pippi's. So the tour does actually include a night at Pippi's Beach House in Rainbow Beach before and after the tag along camping adventure. So that's where we're staying tonight. We just arrived in Rainbow Beach off the Greyhound bus and have the afternoon to basically just explore. So we've come for a walk down Rainbow Beach and the reason it's called Rainbow Beach is not just those rainbow stairs that I came down, but it's these beautiful cliffs right here, which from a distance have a slightly rainbow like pattern, which is quite nice. And the beach is gorgeous here and my friends are on top of each other. Oh. So that was a very tiring, slightly stressful 35 minutes, but we did make it to the top of the sand dune and the view from up here is glorious. Well worth it. And actually we're realizing that there's a few other people up here and we're thinking that actually to get to these sand dunes where we are, um, it's probably an easier route. No way everyone has just done what we just did. That was hard. Automatic, you've driven an automatic before? Yeah. Okay. This is our UHF. This is how we communicate to each other. We should be on number 25. Okay, if you have a problem, Scott, I've got a problem. The biggest thing with driving on Fraser Island in the sand, and I can't stress it enough, is never ever swerve. All right, there'll be times when a wave might come up the beach. Okay, all you have to do is just slow down. All right slow right down the wave will go under the tires it'll come back out the vehicle won't move when we leave here we've got a 15 minute drive down to the ferry keep it straight and accelerate that is the number one thing okay here is our vehicle this is uncle frank, uncle frank. <laughs> Group four in big old Uncle Frank on Fraser Island. Controversially, I am the first driver, but that's because I haven't had a bevy yet today. So I thought if I'm gonna drive right now is the best time for me to drive. Um, and it was all right. And look at this sand. It's thick sand and I've never driven on thick sand before, but it was, it was all good. We're now just waiting 15 minutes for the ferry to actually take us to Fraser. I just did a little drive from Pippi's Beach House to the ferry port. I'm oh, excited. We've like packed up all of our bags. Well, we just packed like a day bag um, or overnight bag, I should say. Good vibes. It's going to be a good trip. Fraser Island. Oh, 
right, so we've arrived at our first stop, just had a little play around with the ball, and now we've got a bit of an early lunch. And on the menu, we basically just have some meat and salad wraps. Stuck some cheese in there, some mayo, as our tour guide Scott said, happy days. Shannon's got the driver's seat in group three. And Isaac's taken over yes. in a, what is it, big old Frank? No, what was it? Big old Uncle, 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 Uncle Frank. Frank. <laughs> Uncle Frank. Car four on Fraser Island. We've changed the itinerary a little bit for our group and I think that's mainly just due to the high tide that there was this morning. So the first proper activity that we're doing is the hike to Lake Wobby. It starts quite literally on the beach and it's just going to be a 45 minute long sand trek to get there. And this is the biggest hike that we do of the whole thing. Oh, that reminds me, I'm going to set my Apple Watch off. There we go. Let's go. <laughs> well, it's very, very hot today. Luckily, the sun's not like absolutely beating down, but it's muggy as fuck. on the sand bank because apparently if you sit here for long enough you'll have those little feet those little fish that come and like nip your toes and get the skin off your feet which excites me and terrifies me equally at the same time so here i am no fish will come over yet i'm a bit apprehensive i'll probably scream if they nip me for the first time i know adam's <laughs> feeling strange I've never done this yeah. that is glorious <laughs> Go on, Isaac. We'll run through everything with you at the campsite. That is the tent rooms over there, okay? Two people per tent. You've got roll mats, fresh sheets for the roll mats. There's pillows, pillow slips, and sleeping bags. Okay, so we have arrived at our campsite, and there is a whole long line of tents that are already set up for us. We've got these kind of mattresses, so there's like a little bit of separation between us and the floor. I'm sharing with Shannon. I don't know where she's gone. And now we're going to pick up the bedding. We're so just grabbing bits. I'm going to grab a pillow. What have you got there? Pillow sheet. Pillow sheet. Okay, very nice. Here. Sleeping bag. Oh. All right, I think. <gasps> what? A humongous spider there just crawled. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not that big. It's not too bad. So some people ask me like, oh, I'm terrified of spiders. Now. Can I travel Australia? And like normally I'd be like, yes, absolutely. Like in normal life, in the cities, in the towns, like it's super uncommon to come across like a spider. But if you're coming out to places like Fraser Island, it's pretty, pretty common. Um, so yeah, still come to Australia. Just don't come places like this. The alcohol that we bought, we gave in yesterday, and that's so that they brought it here to actually be nice and chilled. So I've now got to try and find the goon that I did label with my name on it, but a lot of people put goon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Christy's goon. I guess we're starting with this one. Got some of this stuff. There's a little stereo there for music. You want to crank the beats up? Oh, I do want to crank the beats up. That's exactly what I want to do. I've never tried this game before, but it wasn't the cheapest. So in my mind, that meant that it was not going to be the worst. Oh. <laughs> 
It's not bad. It's definitely not the worst queen I've ever had. We're just following yeah. Scott. Uh, he's going to show us about like the toilets and showers are, which are apparently are a bit of a hike which basically means if I need a wee in the middle of the night, I'm just gonna be doing a wild wee because no way I'm doing this walk in the middle of the night. He's also shown us, what, is it the Rave Cave? The Rave yeah. Cave. The Rave Cave. Mm, apparently in the middle of the woods, there is a Rave Cave where if you've had a bit too much goon and you still wanna make some noise, but you don't wanna bother anyone, you go to the Rave Cave. Funny, because in England, we're... This is the toilet block. Way fancier than I was expecting. You've even got laundry. I mean, no one's gonna be doing laundry out here. We did not like prepare to do our laundry out here. Let's have a look at the toilets. Oh, they're so good. They're like proper hot showers yeah. and toilets. This is a, oh, a good, a proper, this is way better than I was possibly expecting. So we have to share the cooking uh, and group four are making the dinner on the first night. And we are in group four. Woo! So what are we cooking today, Anna? Barbecue with mashed potato and what else? Mixed barbecue and mashed potato. Vegetables. Mixed vegetables. We love a bit of frozen veg. Some good old cold and stuff. For, life. Yeah. for all you vegetarians yeah. out there. <laughs> we cater to everyone. <laughs> Dinner's ready. I've never had so many sausages in my entire life, to be honest with you. Maybe in Sydney, but not in Fraser Island. <laughs> for the night is young. That's some fantastic. That's a good spread. Get it, Sean. This is gonna gravy be gravy whisk and chocolate. Like gravy. Yeah. 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 Just you wait till we add the onions. Yeah. Yeah. It can never be oh, whisked enough. Yes, ready! Mash that potato, mash that potato. Give it all you got, boy. Give it all you got. We have completed dinner. We've got what's in there? We've got Some vegetables. What's in there? Mashed potato, mashed potato with garlic. Mashed potato with garlic. What's that? What else have we got? We've got delicious Ooh. gravy. And what's in this one? And we've got sausages. 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 We've also got some. Burger patties, we got some veggie patties, veggie and veggie sausies. Veggie sausies. Oh, bread. Bread. It's hard work cooking dinner, isn't it? <laughs> just, 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 just a smidge. What's that barbie? Look at them, no, no appreciation. Just, <laughs> just go straight in for it, the audacity. Taste test. Now yeah. Do you know what? It's good. But do you know what? Also, sausage and mash is my favourite meal in the world. Like, I will die for sausage and mash. What's in there? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a Canadian, so you doing it's what? not a good maple uh, maple syrup. Yeah, it's not a good one. No, oh. I'm sorry. How do you know? Just the smell. Because like smells the same. Oh, are you gonna Too much it? sugar, so Oops. I'm not sure what I would do. <laughs> good morning, everyone. We woke up at like seven, seven thirty, and breakfast has been made by one of the groups. Luckily, not my group. And we've got a big fry up this morning, which has been absolutely delightful. I'm feeling <laughs> not hungover. I thought I was going to be hungover when I first woke up because I did have about six cups of goon last night. But I did bring water with me to the rave cave, so... Mm. I don't have made any music here. How do we arrange music? Arrange music? Oh, I do... I have a speaker. <laughs> I love you! I love you! We're finally seeing the big shipwreck here on Fraser Island and having a closer look at it. Got washed up here in 1935, so it's almost 85 years old, almost 90 years ago it washed up. And it's the second most photographed shipwreck in the world after one in Greece, I think. Pretty crazy, it's huge. <laughs> I've been so pissed off when I've done that. Well done, Charlotte! How close do I need to be? Yeah. We're off in the afternoon now, somewhere I can't remember. <laughs> It 
It's a dingo! Champagne pools. Well, that's, that's where we're going. I'm feeling a little bit smug because walking into the champagne pools, you've got these like rocks, but I've got my water shoes. <laughs> I know they look ridiculous, but they do come in handy sometimes. So the reason it's called Champagne Pools is because I'm assuming when it's a little bit more high tide, the waves from behind there come into here and kind of create these fizzy bubbles, which is a bit like obviously sparkling wine, which is why it's the Champagne Pools. But yeah, it's not quite high tide enough. But I think it's really nice like this. The water is super blue. It's really, really clear. And it's just quite glorious. It's a bit more champagne over here, actually. What have you found? How tiny it is. Baby crab. A little baby crab. Yeah. And full. 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 Okay, we're back to the camp and we're actually going on a little hike before sunset and you know where my priorities are because I've been told I'm going out on a hike. I've got the bag of goon. I do not have shoes. <laughs> this hike is being led by Ollie, who's just here. Who coincidentally, Ollie and I met um, five years ago in Greece on a Medsailers trip and then we just bumped into each other on Fraser Island. It's a very, very small world in the traveller community. Very funny. He's working here just for a month out in Fraser Island and he's taking a few of us, anyone who wanted to, um, out for a little walk to, for the sunset. Although I don't think we're going to have a good sunset today because it's been raining a lot. The sand blows? He has told us about it and I can't quite... I can't quite picture it, so I guess all we're gonna do is just wait till we get there to see see what it is. And that you have to rough at them. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were practicing our um roughing, our woofing earlier, and I've got mine down pretty damn pet. So we're out here in the midst of Fraser Island and you look down beneath your feet and you see the outlines of the dingo footprints. It means they're close. So we're looking in all directions and we've been told that if one comes close, we've got to make ourselves bigger than the dingoes and that's what's going to scare them away. That's what's going to make us the bigger thing and they're going to, we're going to win the battle. So I've been practicing my woofing. If a ding, imagine this dingo comes close. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little fan favourite there, mate. You are welcome. Do you have like Brilliant. <laughs> It's a grasshopper? Where's mine gone? I had one. This is Gary. This is Gary. Gary the grasshopper. Gary the grasshopper. Good morning everyone. It was an early start this morning, but it's eight o'clock. We're all getting packed up in the car. How are you feeling, Adam? 
cake, right? <laughs> it's just mm. fantastic. It's our last night, so we've literally just packed up all of our bags into the car, into the trailers. We're heading off. We will be going back to Rainbow Beach today, but on the way we are stopping at Lake Mackenzie, which apparently is normally the first stop that everyone does, but because of the tides and the weather or whatever, um, it's actually going to be our last stop. I hope the sun comes out a little bit. Luckily it's not raining right now, though. it's just a bit overcast. Anyway, let's get in the car. Uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> We just dropped up at Eagle Creek. Uh, it is pouring Eli. with rain. Eli. Is that Eli what, is that Eagle. Eagle. It's an eagle. You said Eagle Creek. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> Not Eagle Creek. <laughs> My backpack's Eagle Creek, uh, but this is Eli Creek. Oops. Anyway, the water's very cold and it's raining. The guys have got some tubes and some bodyboards and some noodles. I have nothing because I was too slow. I was still getting my bikini on, so I'm just going to be swimming. Basically, it's a natural lazy river. So we're here for an hour and a half. It only takes five to ten minutes to float down that river. Uh, so now the people that didn't get tubes, aka me, have like swapped so that we now have got a tube and we're going to go do it again. All right. I'm in the tube now. It is a small tube. It's not the easiest to balance in. Oh! <laughs> you gotta keep your bum up, otherwise you might yeah, get a bit. Some deeper bits yeah, yeah. Some deeper bits and some shallower bits. Run, come on! Yeah, it's a run! Come on, Ellie! Yeah! With our needles! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good fun! Okay, I'm now on the the final piece of apparatus that's been provided to us. This is the bodyboard. So far, so good. Yeah, so much. That was a beautiful drive, very bumpy. It did make me feel a little bit nauseous from the goon I had last night. But we have arrived at our final stop of the whole tour, uh, which is Lake Mackenzie. We might get a bit of a sun peeking through. I see a little bit of blue, blue sky over there. Very small, man. But... Just dive in. One, two, three. There we go. All right, now we go under and wash it off. <laughs> Honestly, it's hard to believe that this place is just like natural because it feels like a swimming pool. The water is crystal clear. The sand is the whitest sand you've ever seen. The water looks so blue, even on like an overcast day here. So we've got about an hour here, which is quite nice to have a swim a little relax. Yeah, I wish we had a little bit longer, but alas, we've got to head back to Rainbow Beach today. So let's enjoy it whilst we're here. Oh, sadly, we are leaving the beautiful Lake Mackenzie now. We really could spend all day here. I really wish that we had lunch here, but that's not the plan. We've got to follow the plan. We're just heading back up to the Jeeps now. And hopefully we'll have lunch shortly because I'm feeling a bit peckish, honestly. Luckily, we haven't had to wait long for lunch at all. We've literally come straight up and we've made our own wraps like we did on day one. And actually now it's all making sense. It does say no food or drink on the beach. So I'm sure that is the reason why we didn't have our lunch there, but it's ready straight away. Happy days, as Scotty says.
just a final little bush walk that we're doing. It departs from Central Station, which is kind of halfway back to the beach from Lake Mackenzie, still on Fraser Island. It's absolutely beautiful. I love these kind of rainforests. Okay, it's the final stretch. We're on the car ferry back to mainland, saying goodbye to Fraser Island. What a trip it's been. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Oh, how are you? How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How was the tour, Emma? Emma. Emma. <laughs> it was amazing, guys. Yes, it was so much fun. It. Everybody should do it. <laughs> Scotty and Katie are amazing. <laughs> and the rain didn't matter. No, it didn't, did it? We still had it. We had fun regardless of the rain. But now it's sunny. But now we out. Yeah, we can finally use the pool. The pool I didn't even know existed last time we were here. They didn't tell us. Yeah. When you book the Pippi's Fraser Island 4WD Tag Along Camping Tour, goodness, that's a mouthful, it costs 539 Aussie dollars for three days and two nights camping on Fraser Island. And it comes in a package where you have a night at their Rainbow Beach accommodation, the night before and the night after the tour. This accommodation is pretty basic, but totally fine. The rooms are very small and you do not have special amenities like personal plugs or lights, but all the rooms do have aircon. The bathrooms aren't the cleanest and are dotted in random spots around the hostel. It says hot water, but I don't know anyone that managed to have a hot shower here. There is a basic kitchen that actually manages to stay pretty clean and there is always nice fridge space here. I think that's because most people are here for just one night, so aren't even storing food. They didn't tell us when we checked in, but I discovered that they actually have a pool, which is nice. They have a laundry room, which you can just use in the afternoons, and they have an indoor and outdoor common space. So in summary, it is an okay hostel, fine for the night, but don't expect a luxurious hostel experience. And anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end. I know this was a long one. I'll be honest, this trip exceeded all my expectations. I absolutely loved it. It is without a doubt my favorite thing I've done on the East Coast so far, and I would 100% recommend it to any backpackers going up the East Coast. I promise it is worth the investment. Unless you have a deathly phobia of spiders, then maybe give it a miss. From Rainbow Beach, I'm now heading on a night bus all the way up to Early Beach, which is my next stop, and I will see you guys in that video. Bye bye.